All right. Welcome to the FGB podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Robin. And I'm Michelle. And uh, this podcast, as you might know if you listen to our first podcast, um, is brought to you by Bodzi, an online nutrition coaching company helping female entrepreneurs bring themselves back in the driver's seat of their personal health, nutrition, fitness goals, um, all while maintaining a busy lifestyle and running a business. And today is our first Fit Girl Boss Shorts, FGB Short. In these shorts, which will be under 30 minutes approximately, we won't have a guest on, but rather it'll be the two of us talking about some fun, um, relatable subjects. And by the end of these shorts, you should have something to take away and something you can start practicing or implementing in your daily routines. Yeah, we want these to be, uh, we want these to be like, fun, maybe something topical, maybe something that's like, you know, relevant to other, you know, current life situations, or maybe just something that you're particularly going through. Um, And short, hopefully, we both like to ramble, though. So we'll see if we can actually keep this under 30 minutes. We'll be straight and to the point. (laughs) Right. Um, We want to have something for you guys to put in your back pocket for the week, to be approached the week. Yeah. So let's get into our topic for this week. Yeah, we're going to be talking about um, romanticizing your life. And uh, this is something that Michelle and I have kind of been talking about for the past couple of weeks because, um, I mean, I brought it up to her in one of our personal check-ins on Mondays. And I came across this account on TikTok where this girl was doing a challenge for herself where she was trying to romanticize all the little things in her life for 31 days and see the effects of what that would do for her um, in her mental health, her motivation, her ability to get shit done. Um, And so I thought this would be like Michelle actually had this idea. It'd be a great kind of short to do on how we can romanticize our nutrition and fitness so that you can sort of surrender to the process of these like mundane actions that truly are what kind of nutrition and fitness ultimately are, right? Like it can get really boring and it can get really routine. And that's a big reason why a lot of people fall out of routine is because it's rarely very exciting. Like meal prepping is not exciting. No. And with Valentine's Day coming up, um, most of us or some of us maybe have romance on our brains. Oh, yes. So it was just a natural topic for us. And honestly, I don't consider myself a romantic person at all. I like doing special gestures for my husband or for my family and friends. And of course, receiving them as well. But I don't think anyone that would know me would consider me as a romantic. And as we've talked about this more and more within our coaching, what romanticizing means to me is kind of just slowing down, taking the time to observe things and enjoy, as well as doing the more mundane or everyday tasks with a little bit more intent. That's a great word. I like that word intent. Um, You know, being intentional with your, your meals, being intentional with your actions, it just kind of like brings you into that present moment. Um, for myself I am I'm kind of the same way I'm not a huge romantic person I think a lot of like my romantic side comes from my creative side um and I can totally get into that like zone when I'm painting or when I'm drawing or something like that and I totally get into like this romanticized um you know time when I do that but as a nutrition coach I'm like very much about objective data. And I'm so, I'm a huge believer that, you know, it's important to record information and, and uh, I guess gather information to get a clear understanding of where you're going. And I think where that comes from is the fact that, I mean, we work with a lot of people who have very specific goals, whether they're like perform, like, you know, performance goals, energy goals, weight loss goals, all that kind of stuff. But why I like this topic right now is because where we are in life right now, where there's, 
you know, a lot of gyms are closed. A lot of people aren't at work. A lot of people don't have routines. I feel like a lot of people are just hanging on by a thread with their motivation. Their discipline is lacking and maybe they just don't have a clear understanding of what those goals are. And so I'm kind of finding that right now is not really a time where objective data might be the answer to like understanding where you're going. And instead we can focus on things like our daily activities and how to romanticize those. So what I wanted to do is kind of like go over what some daily activities are and what kind of the unromanticized version of them are and how we can romanticize them. And that will hopefully give you guys a better understanding of like what this actually means in terms of our everyday life. And I did, I'm going to, um, in the, um, I guess the, what do you call the bottom of a podcast where it talks about what we're talking about? The, the bio, the, the footnotes, I don't know. footnotes. I don't know. <laughs> so in that part of the bio, in, in that part of the caption um, below the bio where you read about it, I'm going to give some credit to um, this woman named Julia Bruns. I found some of this information on one of her blogs. Um, so I want to give her full credit because I think she did an amazing job of um, breaking down these like, again, mundane tasks and how to romanticize them. Um, Michelle, what, what about like a wake up call? What does that look like unromanticized and romanticized? Love it. And just to take it, you know, a step back, what you mentioned with where we are right now, <clears throat> where we are is complete groundhog day. So I yeah. love that we're going to go through, you know, what a normal day would look like because let's be honest, a lot of our days are very normal and we're doing the same things over and over. So for a wake up call, what that would look like to me, um, you know, not hitting snooze over and over again. Um, maybe taking the time when I wake up to take that extra stretch, you know, reach down, get the blood flowing, not just jump up out of bed and then start writing to, you know, getting ready for school, getting ready for breakfast, but setting my alarm, not hitting snooze and giving myself that extra time to just kind of move along with the flow of the day rather than jump right into catching up with it. Yeah. And it can be, you and I are huge um, experience lovers of like coffee and wine. Right. And like, like yeah. And taking the time in the morning to enjoy your favorite mug with coffee in it and sit and relax with your pets and, you know, stuff like that. Um when it comes to, you know, things at work, you know, we, an, a, a typical work day for a lot of us might be meetings, unnecessary meetings, emails, cold coffee, because we still need it, but we don't take the time to warm it up or brew a fresh pot. Um, our coworkers are annoying us or our employees are annoying us, or, you know, we have assignments piling up and we have our to-do list that's long and, and it's so, so easy. And Hey, like I'm totally guilty of this too, sometimes where I get into these days and I just view everything work-related as like a task that's more of an annoyance than anything. Yeah. If we <laughs> romanticize that we can, use things like our favorite pens and our sta favorite stationery, appreciating our coworkers, um, appreciating how good you are at your job, um, you know, having funny conversations in the middle of a workday with your coworkers or your employees, um, you know, making sure that you can set yourself up by a window and appreciate the weather outside when you're having to be inside for the day, right? And it's literally about slowing down and just appreciating those tiny little things that can make your day a lot better. Yeah. And again, we're in a, you, we have a unique timing to do this because for a lot of us, we would spend, you know, half an hour to an hour commute into work every day. And yeah. You know, if you're like me, 
sometimes what that means is, okay, I've got an extra half an hour, an hour added to my work day. But what if you took back that time for yourself and instead, you know, instead of I'm going to use this windshield time and just get right into my work. What if you retook that and repurposed that and said, okay, you know what? For the first 20 minutes or half an hour that it would normally take for me to drive to the office, I'm going to sit in front of the window because it's really sunny out right now. And I'm just going to sit and have my coffee and, you know, think about where I want my mindset to go. And maybe I'm writing down my to-do list at the same time, but I'm not rushing around getting straight into it. I've reclaimed that time as something for myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's like kind of how we can, again, romanticize the time after our work day, right? We're not, we're no longer having to, and again, depends on where you're listening, of course, maybe some of you are commuting to and from work and obviously depends on your situation. But as far as I know, a lot of us are not commuting to and from work. And so, you know, when you were, or when you are, you might be coming home and just crashing on the couch and turning on the TV and just staying there for the rest of the evening because you're exhausted. Um, And, but instead we can, you know, maybe take the long way home from our commute and appreciate our surroundings or go out for a walk after work. So it can kind of act as your end of day commute, right? Um, Saying hi to your pet, saying hi to your husband, your partner, like making yourself a nice dinner, um, practicing some stretching, some yoga, mobility, like all of those things are, man, like the smallest little activities, like they really aren't big. And that's why they're so um, great because they're not, a, it's not a huge commitment. It's like, we're talking about really little things that can make literally such a huge difference. My favorite one so far is going to get fresh flowers and having them on my table. Yes. Love going it. to the farmer's market, go to the grocery store, picking up some fl- like flowers and just having them there. Like it's so nice. And it's just brightens up, brightens up the space. Yeah. And you know, that's a good way to point out that a lot of these things that we can romanticize are very available to us. They're free and we're already doing them anyways. We might as well make them enjoyable. Yeah, that's a great, yeah, we're already doing them anyways. Um, so there are like a list, I mean, we want to give you, we want to give you like little things that you can do. And I, I have like a literal list here and I, I was writing them down and some of them are just so funny, but also like, if you think about it and actually do it, then you're like, Oh, that like made my day like quite nice, <laughs> like you know? Yeah. And, and so, so I can just give you like a couple examples of this list that I have in front of me. Um, wear what you want and dress how you feel like, okay. There is not a better time in our life where we are able to do that because a lot of us are working from home. So if you want to dress up, dress the fuck up. If you want to like stay in sweatpants, cool. But like maybe do your hair or like just make yourself feel good. Um, Cooking your favorite meal, whether you're using an old recipe that you haven't done in a really long time. Um, You're seeking out a new spice that you can use. You're trying a new ingredient. You're going to the farmer's market and you're asking for recommendations on how to whatever, right? Um, I wrote jumping in the mud because I just think that's hilarious. Like, and that can be like jumping in the mud, jumping in a puddle, go playing in the snow, go play with your dog in the snow. Like I promise you, and I actually do this regularly that if you go outside and if you have a pet, and you just go play with them in the snow for five minutes, it's going to be the best thing that ever happened to you all day. <laughs> it's it's yeah. true. Um, other um, things can be like gardening, painting, um, you know, volunteering. I already mentioned earlier, like practicing yoga, um, meditation, baking some cookies just for the sake of making your apartment or house smell like baked goods. Yeah. Um, I think it's important to note to, to those listening that, um, this isn't a concept that, you know, as we, as we kind of talk about it, it's funny because 
people might think of us like sitting around, like <laughs> holding hands, like in our ears and like yeah. romanticizing things. But really it's, it's not about that. This is about a mindset, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, you're totally right. And that's why like, it's so easy to get into this like hippy dippy mindset about this. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, I have to be like a flower child um, in order to be like good at this or actually like embrace this. It's like, no, like I am, like I said, I, I, I am a huge believer of like objective, like data and improving your life and like following things and tracking things and like stuff like that. But like, I have to let go of that sometimes. And yeah you know, the the least romantic person in the world can benefit from romanticizing one action in their life. Right. And it's funny because um, with my uh, six-year-old who's just gone back to school, I find it so easy to do this because I can romanticize right now silence. <laughs> Yeah. Right. And it's just, you can just actually sit down and just take it in. And there's such like a calmness and peaceness at the peacefulness about silence in general. Yeah. But yeah. So all of this, you know, how do we, how do we, how does it pertain to fitness and nutrition? And that's the important part, right? I think like, you know, that's where our expertise lie. That's where we coach that's what we know um and relating it all back to how we can better ourselves through food through movement exercise you know sleep habit like that's the important part um and i think that one thing i'll kind of from a jumping off point i'll kind of kick this off by saying um the whole notion of surrendering to that process is something that I've really embraced and like a really, really recently. And I heard this from one of my, uh, from actually a business coach, one of my business coaches. And she was talking to me about surrendering to the process in terms of like your business and growing your business and stuff like that. And then I started taking that idea and applying it to like things. Um, yesterday, for example, I went on a run and it was like the slipperiest run I've ever went on in my entire life. It was like this half hour run and I was just slipping all over the place because it had just snowed. Yeah. And usually that would have dri- like driven me nuts. Like I would have just been like, why can't I grip the road? I'm not running fast. I'm going to be the slowest. This is going to be the slowest 5k ever. Like, and it was all about the destination. Like what me finishing the run at a good time, feeling good with a good pace, whatever. And so throughout that run, all I kept telling myself was Robin, just like, like quit it, just surrender to what you're doing right now. Surrender to the snow, surrender to the slippage, surrender to the fact that you're not in perfect running conditions and forget about the end because you're literally not going to enjoy it nearly as much as if you don't surrender to it. And so for me, it just, uh, you know, a little bit of an anecdotal piece there is that is how it can apply directly to your workouts, your movement is if you surrender and romanticize what you are doing in the moment when it comes to your movement. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Running in, running in this type of weather for us is so difficult and for me, for romanticizing fitness, um, I think there's been a turn in fitness uh, for women specifically over the last decade. And it's one that I absolutely love. So women are using fitness for mental health and a focus on becoming more physically and mentally strong. And how that specifically can be romanticized is that whatever you're choosing chosen movement is whether you crossfit whether you run whether you swim it's a celebration of what women's bodies are capable of and I'm I'm sorry to sound cheesy about that but you know it's fitness is a celebration and it's all about you know what we can do and that in itself I find just very romantic it's a you're totally right because women find and can like seek confidence, can build confidence 
through, um, you know, challenging themselves physically. Right. And that you think about, I literally just posted this on my Instagram this morning, whereas I was having a conversation with one of my clients and we were talking, literally, we were just talking about the benefits of fitness. Like what are the benefits of working out? And yeah. Okay. Let's like, forget about weight loss and getting shredded and abs and like stuff like that. That is like one very small benefit. And we should actually use that as like an added bonus um, to working out versus the reason why we work out because there is a magic to exiting a class or exiting the gym or finishing a workout where you push yourself to maybe a place where you hadn't pushed yourself before. And I know that's more common in like CrossFit classes, hit classes where the intensity is really high and it's exciting. Um, but even like, you know, any style of, of working out, you are, you've, asked something you've demanded something of your body that breeds confidence and how that is able to trickle in other areas of your life is what really matters and so yeah like using your movement and your fitness to build up your relationships to build up your business to build up your marriage the relationship you have with your kids like that's what really matters and that like you said is totally the the romantic um part of working out for sure love it what about food what about nutrition how can we how can we romanticize um nutrition to help us ultimately get to our goals yeah so food in itself I feel like is very easy to romanticize because, you know, you have the senses, right? (laughs) Um, All involved with food, but looking for seasonal local ingredients or going to your local butcher and ordering fresh from the counter is something that, you know, would be easy to romanticize. So I like to do a small special trip to this grocery store and grab fresh ingredients for one special meal. So for example, Friday night, um, there's a small independent grocery store right by my house and shout out Mary Lou's in Burlington because I love Mary Lou's. Please sponsor me. Like I'll wear Mary Lou's t-shirts around town. But this going there, walking there, taking the time and like I can look through the produce, I can go to the butcher counter and get a special cut of meat or get kebabs or something that makes it feel like a treat and makes it feel fun. Mm -hmm. And then I walk back home and, you know, I put on some tunes and cook the meal and it becomes more of um, an event than a task, which throughout the week, I loathe dinners. (laughs) Yeah, right. Yeah. So this is just something that I can do to it's like Friday night, got the music pumping, I've just gone for a little walk, I've got all these fresh ingredients, and I can make a meal for my family. Yeah. Wow. And what why that's important is because it turns it's sustainable. Yeah. Right? Like it is totally a sustainable action. Whereas, you know. And you, you listening, if you are like whoever's listening might may or may not know that we are huge believers of tracking your food, right? right? Like we believe that tracking your food is so great for educational purposes. And again, I'm going to say this again, like tracking data is a, is a great thing to understand what your body needs and, and what you need to thrive and all that kind of stuff. However, you know, we always say to our our clients and anybody who asks, like, we don't believe in tracking your food forever, right? We don't believe in collecting data forever. We don't believe in being like hyper aware and hyper focused on all the little things that are, you know, that you may need to do in order to get to a specific goal. Because it's, you know, we are at the end of the day, trying to balance results and sustainability, And I think that what you're explaining and what you're describing is the big part of it being sustainable, where you need to kind of understand um, how to 
act and how to, um, yeah, prepare meals and how to eat and how to cook in a way that's going to be enjoyable for you long term. Right. And this is totally it. Like, if you have to eat healthy, you got like, make it fun. Make yeah. it enjoyable, make it exciting. And then you take the focus off of that end goal. You take the focus off of you needing to lose weight or needing to fit in some old clothes or you needing to do whatever X, Y, and Z. It took, it puts the, puts the focus back on the process. Love it. Um, so yeah, I mean, we would, we're gonna, <laughs> we're doing pretty good for time, eh? Yeah, is, I can even yeah. see it. We're, yeah, and I think we're about 30-ish, almost 30. So uh, like we mentioned at the beginning, we want to keep this short. We want to keep this actionable for you guys and just kind of give you something to think about. Um, So we're going to wrap this up and kind of just leave it with, you know, take two to three things in your life today that you're going to slow down and romanticize the hell out of and just note how it makes you feel. Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Um, we'd love to also hear from anybody who has other suggestions on how they're currently romanticizing in their life and how it's affecting them, um, in getting to their goals and, and, you know, feeling just more at peace and, and motivated and, and yeah, awesome. thank you guys so much for watching, uh, watching, mm-hmm. listening or watching, I guess, if we're posting this on YouTube. Um, and yeah, have yourself an awesome day. So before we go, actually, what I will do is on our Bodzi Instagram, which is my Bodzi, um, I'm going to be taking over the stories today. So I'm going to give some examples of how I am going to romanticize my day. And um, to be honest, I have nothing really exciting planned besides work um, picking up my son and bedtime routine. So let's see how I can make this romantic and show it's a perfect, perfect opportunity. All right, guys, we'll, uh, catch you on the next episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. We really hope that these FGB shorts are going to be valuable to you guys, um, give you some things to think about, but also more importantly, we want you to be able to put into action things that we're talking about. Um, so if you're listening to this on Apple or Spotify, make sure that you subscribe to this uh, show so that you don't miss any future episodes. If you're watching this on YouTube, great. Hit that subscribe button to make sure that you're not missing out on awesome um, interviews in the future and other FGB shorts. So we have some awesome um, podcasts being recorded this week with some amazing girl bosses um, who are wildly successful. So we're going to talk about um, not only their success, but more importantly um, for us, in this case, how they manage their health, their nutrition, their fitness routines, all while you know running that busy, busy lifestyle. Um, so we'll talk to you guys soon. Stick around for our future episodes. Mm-hmm.